Hello everyone, welcome back to the live coverage of the Seabirds Michigan Open here in the Kellogg Arena, Michigan. Expecting a great match here between Karen Kaur and Margaret Fevilova. And with me in the booth is Mark White, my name is Tim de Ruiter. And really interesting matchup here as Karen Kaur hasn't really been showing herself for a long time. Decided to come back to the game and she's here in the quarterfinals of this tournament. What do you think? I think she's made the right decision. And I've watched her, a couple of her matches and uh, I've got to say, she's striking the ball absolutely fantastically from a snooker background, of course, Tim. And uh, has got great fundamentals. And as we often say in the booth, that's something that stay with you forever. So, you know, even if you do have a long layoff, you can still come back and be strong. Right, take it away then. Yeah, let's see. She's breaking from the side. I've seen Margaret break from the side a lot today. That's pretty good break until now. So let's see what she can produce here. Okay, nice square hit. Overcut the one a little bit. That's how the one ball got high and she oh. made no ball, so... Look at this straight in on the one as well, Karen Kaur. Yeah, it's nice to get going in the match as well to, you know, you're, you start the match, you lose the leg, you're like, oh, well, it's not a good start. And then you get this as an early starter in the match. You know, that could be a big deal. Well, you see that deliberate pause, Tim, on the backswing. She did roll a little further than she probably would have liked. Expected to go long rail, long rail here. Up and down, two rails. Top spin with a little left. Oh, hit it well. Oh. oh don't scratch, she's okay. Gone a little bit. Oh, it's quite straight, straight to go to the four. She didn't really put some spin on there, and that's how it kind of curved to get more straight on the three. Yeah, shaking her head. Yeah, quite interesting matchup, like I said, because obviously Karen is from a more older generation. Margaret is still, of course, she's had good results, but still upcoming. Like, there might be a lot more to come in the future. So it really got... Yeah, something from both sides. Yeah, smart shot there. Didn't try to do too much now. Just get a decent safety in here. I'm not sure she'll bother taking the bank on. She's called safe. Yeah, probably cutting the four ball on the left. Getting the cue ball around the angles with left spin to get behind the five and the nine. Oh, doesn't want to make oh, the eight. Don't make the eight. Oh, and that cue and ball. And the cue ball. Well, it's Ooh. a full house. Yeah, she just hit that a little bit too thin. That's how she's lost both balls. And was a good try, though. Yeah, it was an excellent try, wasn't it? Yeah, just to make both balls actually is tough. If you're trying to do it, you won't succeed. And early chance for Margaret Fefalova Steyer, as she's now known. Married Tyler, of course. Yeah, and especially around that five ball, it's a really nice gift for Margaret that she got ball in hand on the four because this was exactly key shot. So playing the key shot with ball in hand is very nice. I mean, no, that's something I would like to have always. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't we all? So still needs to control the cue ball well. Might be able to just stun off the rail just a, a really soft stroke just a little bit can bump the nine it's also okay nice shot guaranteed her to have an angle on the six now does she have enough angle to stun off the rail or does she have to go forward two rails yeah, she's stunning i think tim don't cheat the pocket too much wow really smashed that in yeah and even though she hasn't been playing a lot of 
tournaments in the last year, of course, with everything that has happened, she did still put their practice, like she still put time in her practice. She kept playing with Tyler, practiced a lot and was working out, traveling still to events, doing coaching. So you can really see that in her game at the moment, like some people don't really come back from a long pass, but she definitely does because she's in the quarterfinal here and why wouldn't she be able to go all the way, right? Well, absolutely, certainly could. She's got the, we're talking about Karen Cole's technique. She's certainly got very, very strong fundamentals as well. Very determined, Tim, as well, isn't she? Yeah, she's really got the eyes on the prize, like they would like to say. And I mean, I've been around the European pool scene for quite some years and we used to play at the same European Championships in the Youth Cup in Cyprus. So I've been around her for a while and yeah, always has been a good player in her category. So, you know, she's always had it in her, but now it's time to shine on the big stage. Here she comes. Yeah, she's won the first game and has the break here. Always nice to have the first game on the board, just to loosen up a little bit, get some confidence. Okay, better squat on the one. Makes three balls, well, four look balls. Look at this, look at this. <laughs> Four balls, absolutely perfect on the two. And I think it might even be a 3-8 combo just to finish it off. <laughs> wow. I think that's the break of the week. Yeah, I mean, if you just look at this spread, she can position her really close to that 3-8 combination as well. If she makes that, then yeah, what else is there to do? Well, we all know. Tyler Steyer has one of the best 10 ball breaks in the business. I think you'll agree with that, would you? No, he knows a lot about the break. So just a lot of experience. So I'm pretty sure they worked on her break as well. Which clearly shows. I mean, Ooh. four balls. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wow, yeah, look at that for a shot. Yeah, she tried to get so close to yeah. that three ball and overdone it. And I don't know why she didn't have to get too close to it. I was talking to Aloysius Schapp after his match that he just won. And he was telling me he was just finding it so hard to control the, the speed of the cue ball, Tim. And also John Mora was, just made an unbelievable scratch that you wouldn't think was possible by overdrawing. And it just went on and on and on and on. A bit like me, on and on and on. <laughs> Let's get back I mean, to the game. You know, just... In this format, we're playing two races, the four, win or break, with a deciding shootout. The nerves are completely different than the old-fashioned races to nine and all that. So that means that players, they really, like, the nerves are, yeah, changing their mind as well. They really get a different perspective of the game, choosing some shots, which sometimes not are even possible. You know, like, it's... The format is really interesting. It makes it interesting to watch. So Faithlova tried to kick. Conservative there, but left the shot on the three. And she Karen makes this. Oh, she it's there. Look at this for a shot. Beautifully played. Yeah, she would always be on the four. Would be good for her as well. It's her first match in the arena here. So it would be nice to also get that first game in and get going. I think this could be a real close match. Maybe it could go all the way to a shootout. Yeah, really has a big snooker background. You can just really see that style in her. Yeah, and also another thing, the glasses that she's wearing, you know, these were invented for snooker and 
invented by a guy called Jack Carnham, who was a coach and also a commentator. And famously made them for Dennis Taylor. I'm sure you've heard of Dennis Taylor, everybody. Well, Karen wore them as well during her snooker career. And wearing them today, and what they do, of course, is allow you to get down onto the queue and not look over the top of your glasses. So fabulous invention by Jack Carnan. Rest in peace, my friend. I actually went to coaching with him. He said I was a lost cause. <laughs> he said not even the best pair of glasses in the world could can help save you. you. No, <laughs> give it up. Get in the commentary Ooh, booth. Oh, she overhit that. I was a little surprised that she stunned the cue ball over from the five to the eight as she got a little straighter there and now rolled too far. Yeah, she's got nasty, hasn't it? And she's still she's still able to cut it, but then we have to watch the cue ball going towards the side uh, towards the corner pocket. Got this, maybe a hair of left spin. It goes in and a nice cue ball. She levels the score one each. Yeah, let's just go around the room very quickly, Tim and give you some updates on scores. Ali Fisher is in action against Jasmine Ocean. Jasmine 2-1 up at the moment in the first set. Kelly Fisher is also in action. 2-1 up on Angelina uh, Tikoalu. Weiwei, Wei Ji Jen is up against Amalia Matas from Spain. The Taiwanese leads 2-0 there. And then, of course, this one you're watching. We all know the score there because it's on the screen. It's 1-1 one, one, waiting to break off with the number four on her shirt. Look, four Jerry. Do you know what that is? I have no idea. And you don't either, I guess. I don't. <laughs> I don't have a clue. I was really hoping that you was going <laughs> to I have never seen it before. I, I, would, <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> OK, so referee Dwayne Payne from Oklahoma. Wrecked the balls ready. Karen Court to break off. Breaking from the center. Let's see if she breaks like a snooker player or like experienced pool player. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's hopefully not. That'll be a foul. <laughs> oh, did cut a little bit more. I the four. Made the ten. But early all early tens do count, but not on the break. That would make the game a little bit too easy. You see replay. Double impact going back into the stack there. Now, what about this for, a, for an idea? I'll keep it to myself. Well, she, can, she has to go for this. If she makes it and get on the two, I think there's a 3-6 combination along the long rail. So it's just one, one tough shot, top left. We need that left spin a little bit to straighten up the angle going up and down. Yeah, she put oh, a little. Oh, beautiful. She put just a little bit left on there, but not much, and that's how she ran into the two. Yeah, I would expect her not to play as much spin as maybe, you know, a, a, a modern pool player might. Yeah, she really likes to play center ball. I can already see it. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but I really would have liked to see some spin here and there. It's not all about you, Tim. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's lots of p viewers that enjoyed it without the spin as well. <laughs> I'm, I'm one of them because I'm old school. Well, I'm just old. Right, here we go. On the two ball extension called by Karen. Yeah, I forgot to explain for the viewers. We're playing with a 30 second shot clock here. And both players have one extension each per rack to speeden up the game a little bit. Makes it more interesting. And she's playing safe here as she didn't see any future going to the three and the six. And well, she left the cue ball glued to that short rail. So very tough for Margaret to get back on the three. Maybe impossible. I mean, the best she could hope for may be running between the five and the ten. Hit the side rail as well and come out and maybe leave herself a bank tim of some kind maybe but it requires a lot of power so playing the safety she's caught that too thin much too thin she's lost the two ball and she's lost the cue ball so now karen will be going at least two 
maybe three rails here to get onto the three six combo it's on yeah she can go all around the angles here stun left or in her case just stun oh wow. unexpected miss there and also if you look at the cue ball like I was think she it jumped oh was she trying to play for safety on the three like she really didn't no. even try to go around the angles I really expected her to go yeah. to the short side I did too I thought maybe she might have got a bad contact or something but she didn't oh, and she might she might attack here she might put the cue ball right in between the three and the six no she was shooting and oh well she has a shot but leaving that three ball on the short rail does make everything a lot more tough the only saving grace you could say is the next ball the five ball is quite some distance away as well so she can let the stroke out a little bit here and go for it and maybe get some cover if she misses it fascinating stuff here It's a kiss. Shot. Oh, how did you go <laughs> twice? Is she going to get through them? Wow, I can't believe that. How did she find the gap between the six, Aaron? Like, if she kisses the six, she's always going to be on the five ball. Always. Almost went back through them again. <laughs> wow. So, opposite sides here, probably. Leaving the five behind the six and the cue ball on the other side. And oh. She does have a little edge here, Karen Kaur. Leaked out just a little bit. You can see the brain working. Where do I want to put that cue ball? Where do I want to put the five ball? Another gap. gap. Stopping to have a look at her work and she won't be very pleased with it. Well, it looks like it doesn't go. Looks like it's still just the edge, but no, I don't think it goes. Tony Robles said, keep an eye on Tim. He keeps turning his head on the side to have a look and it does work, Tim, oh, for you, doesn't it? Oh, and that cue ball. Will oh, oh she dear. lost the cue ball there. Well, goes back to her chair and will be bitterly disappointed at that. I mean, it was on, wasn't it, Tim? Not yeah. even sure where she was trying to put the cue ball, to be honest. Maybe just on the top rail. Yeah, just on the top rail. And I mean, that's a little, little unforced error. Like, she really didn't have to get the cue ball that close to the corner pocket could have played some spin to avoid the kiss you know and Karen didn't really start great but if she keeps getting little chances like this she's going to start well soon and then things might get real dangerous for Margaret yeah you don't have to invite a player too many times with easy shots before they start to you know not only get chances but to see and that your opponent's struggling and it gives you more confidence yeah left the eight for the top right corner pocket good solid solid stun Not much to stay, not much to say here actually because at nine is in front of the side. If she makes this, 
<laughs> almost put herself bridging over the tent, just stopped in time. You can really see her struggling with the speed of the table still. Yeah, honestly, I haven't heard from a player who hasn't struggled with the speed on here. Especially if you've been playing all your games on the outer tables, Tim. This one does play slightly different. Yeah, so it? Margaret already has played one match on this table in this tournament. And Karen did not get the chance yet. So that's a little advantage. But the advantage goes to Karen Kaur here, leading 2-1. to one. And we'll go for a short break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Here's Karen Kaur. She's ready to break the balls, but she has to wait a little bit though because Margaret Fevilova chose to take a little break. She'll be on her way. And this is the perfect opportunity to thank our sponsors and partners, of course, because without them, this whole U US Pro Beard Series is not even possible. So we would like to thank Seabirds Billiard Supplies, Predator Q's, Q Sports International, the WPBA, and our US Pro Billiard Series partners are Kamui, Alpha Coin, Jam Up Apparel, and Medaya Light. Thank you all for supporting us. Well, we've got quite the lineup for you tomorrow, guys. We don't know who's going to be in what yet, but I can tell you the matches are going to be at 10 a.m., 12, 2 p.m., 5 p.m. We've got semi-finals, finals. Who will be crowned the Michigan Ladies Open champion? Could be one of these two picking up a check for $13,000 getting closer Tim to finding out who it might be and the seven ball is going to go is it no it's dry well and she's left a nice present for Margaret here stuck to that 10 ball and bridging over the 10 I'm that's not the best place you want to be on the table yeah and look it's difficult because where do you push to because look at the eight ball right over the corner pocket Tim and you don't want to leave an easy, you know, billiard or, or combo on it, do you? Yeah, bank combo is definitely... Oh, well, I also, the seven is over yeah. the hole, so there's also a bank on the seven. Well, I'm not sure about this. I was thinking maybe pushing the three to the rail to at least make it a little difficult. Yeah, I don't get that shot, I'm afraid. Now she's left Karen a chance to bank the one onto the seven, maybe. Draw, well, she can't really draw onto the eight, but... High left, go to the center of the table. Yeah, she's no, called the seven. She's called it. Here we go. Yeah, 
And it's it's there. It's there. Great shot. But... Has she got enough pace on it to get past think, the three ball? I think so, yeah. Great shot. Fantastic shot, wasn't it? She hit that absolutely perfectly, Tim. Couldn't have hit it any better, could she? No, look, look at that. Look at the cue ball as well. Left it in the center of the table to optimize the chances to get a next shot. I like that word. Thank you. I'm not going to ask you to say it again, though. <laughs> Played that very confidently. I wow. like the way she's played that. Especially with the shot clock going there. There was quite some nerves there. But just missed the six as well. Perfect. And like I said, Margaret doesn't want to give too many opportunities like this because even though Karen didn't start well, she might really hit a gear at some point. So this is to go on the hill. Yeah, this is a last eight match, quarter final match. Ooh, that cue ball did run a little further than she wanted to. A little funny look on her face going, oh, no, 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 no. And she's still okay. She can stun the cue ball. Can go one or two rails for the four in the center pocket. I might play top right here. Just like that, nicely played and good speed. I was gonna say finally, but it would be a little rude. But she's really been looking for that right speed on the table. As has everyone that's played on this table today. Yeah. You know, it's, it's yeah, not yeah. rude to say that. P players have struggled, the best in the world have struggled. Yeah. Karen once was the best woman in the world, wasn't she? Yeah, she's had a huge career, of course. Margaret just starting out on hers. Karen hoping to revive hers. Yeah, currently 52 years old and still plays like a champ. Wow, that's impressive. Well, earlier on, we had a lovely little story. We had Jerry Eng on, on the camera. 84 years old, still competing. I hope I'm still walking at 84, or breathing even, let alone playing pool, Tim. Yeah, also... Would you push me in a wheelchair to get me to the booth or not? Pull me up the stairs? <laughs> That's a tough is one, it, right? Is it rude to say no? <laughs> yes, very. <laughs> <laughs> Wants to bounce here, she's got it. Yeah, Nicely played. Nice angle. Probably plays this with left spin, going three rails to leave herself a longer tempo. I'm not trying to get super close here. Just well the left, try to get close to that center pocket. Which there is no scratch. Okay, she did try to get to the other side of the table. And last time she overran the exactly cue ball and again. Exactly the same. Like this is why I didn't like to go to the other side of the ten because you're crossing your positional area, which makes it super tough to judge the speed. And especially where she has been struggling finding the speed, I'm taking a longer ten. I'm just leaving herself just next to the side pocket and take a longer ten. But she still has a shot here. This is to go on the hill. Karen Kaur. Ooh, oh, and it goes in. While the clock was going off again. Well, nerves of steel. She's been there before, done it all before. Jasmine Ocean is certainly doing it as well. She's on the hill also. 3 1 up against Ali Fisher. Kelly Fisher is on the hill also against Angeline Tikoalu. Three racks to one. And Amalia Matas, 2-2, two -two with Weiwei. Wei. So a long way way to go in that match still. Tim loves my little puns. Yeah. He absolutely loves me. If you could see him shaking his head here. 
I'm just glad we've not got cameras on us. There's the camera on Karen Court walking up to break off for the set. Yeah, America's Hall of Famer as well, Karen Core. And little fact, she has been the runner-up in the World Nine Ball Championship four times. Wow. That it's quite rough. A bit like Jimmy White, famous snooker player from back in the, around about the same era as well, I would say. Oh, Six two. times runner-up in the World Snooker Championships. Can you, remember, can you imagine that? And five of them against the same player. Yeah, that's... It's still a great achievement, but... Just also a little sad. <laughs> Forever known as the Neely Man. Yeah. <laughs> I know, it's terrible, isn't it? But, you know... First, be first best loser. <laughs> yeah, but who wouldn't give their right arm for that? Well, not right arm. Yeah, right arm, because he's left-handed. Yeah, yeah, he could. <laughs> he could have given his right arm. So, a nice break. Made the ball in the side and chance on the one ball. Ooh. Oh, and I expected her to get that. Well, she's had a little bit of a roll here. Margaret will come to the table and see that she doesn't have, well, not an attacking shot, really. Can she? Has she got enough to draw off and try and get behind the, the four ball, as she's called it, in the side? In the corner, sorry. What's she thinking here? Oh, she called the eight, did she? Has she called the eight ball? She has. She called the eight ball, you know. Oh, this is a clever shot. I like that. Put Karen in a uncomfortable spot here. Yeah, also on the other side, we have Margaret, who's also not very new to the game, 25 years old, and a European nine ball champion. And also won a women's Euro tour two actually to be precise yeah and i think she's also won the belarusian championships about over 30 times i think something like yeah, that. yeah she she's definitely the best player in her country <laughs> belarus so karen managed to hit the one but no coverage so opportunity here for margaret And it's do or die here in this first set. I often wake up in the mornings feeling very, very tired and thinking, oh, no, I've got to get out of bed. And then I realize what I'm doing. And I jump out of bed and cannot wait to get here. And it's been like that for the last three days. And we've got one more day to go. Which is always the best day. Always the best day. Always looking Semi -finals forward to the final and day. Final. Yeah, it's fabulous, isn't it? Still a big shot here for Margaret. Can she make the three and draw the cue ball to the left side of the four? Oh, big stroke. Well, a little bump, and is the five going to block the pocket? Oh, it has, hasn't it? I think it has. Which would be a pretty brutal roll as she really struck that three ball nice. It was a big stroke, and... She's just checking, like, she could play this pocket speed and float it in if she hits a short rail, but there's also the chance that she hangs the four in the jaws, and Karen Cora has a nice layout to play for winning the set, so that's quite tricky. Kieran over the four, uh, seven as well. She's oh, she played it, it well. Beautiful she played shot. it well. And now, just little tricky thing that could happen is that 7-8 because 7 it does go past the 8 but you could lose the 8 and then there's a 7-8 combination but you could lose the 7 ball oh hit that a little firm At should, least, sorry, go on. should still be okay she can go possibly 3 rails forward to the other long rail
It's perfect again. Extension on that Predator Q. Two of our main sponsors on her shirt there, Predator Kamui Tips. Yeah, I'm sure she's playing the seven ball here, and this was wow. what I was talking about. If she, she was always going to lose control on the A, and if she would have played the combo, she was always going to lose, lose control the on the seven. So that was quite unexpected. I expected her to play this at least with some more speed. Yeah, and had to play safe and... Oh, it's leaked out. Yeah, and I expect Karen to play a typical snooker safety. Banking the eight straight up to the other side of the table. And have the nine ball in between. Yeah. Yeah. It has to be careful that she doesn't, oh. she's called the bank, yeah. You know, if you play this the way, that's the obvious way to play, then the, Q, the, the eight ball's gonna go near to that corner pocket, so you might as well just play the bank. Well, she definitely had a shot, took a shot at it, and that's very aggressive. And she's left it on for Margaret. Kelly Fisher has taken the first set against Angelina Ticaru. 4-1, she's up in that first set and it's well it's zero zero of course in the second just started well just a little bit short but it's okay yeah stun left again i'm not going to get straight on the 10, I'm just leaving myself a slightly longer 10 ball. But she did, she played a bigger stroke and perfect on the 10. Oh, she's going to pull one back here to 3 2, and we'll be breaking in the next one. This isn't over yet. So, come on, Tim. We are back here at the Seabridge Michigan Open. Margaret Fevilova trying to make a comeback here. Was down three to one. And is breaking here. Made four balls her last break. And she do it again. Well, she's oh. made one, but it's the wrong color. It's the white one, it's gone in the side. Now then, she will be looking for any potential hazards for Karen Cole, are there any? Not that I can see, I don't think. No, this looks pretty wide open, and especially if she can get nice on the two, and the three, four, five are connected. Well, three, four, five, six, and then you've got the seven, eight, nine at the same side. So it's only about this beginning of the game. basically the next two balls, isn't it? Yep. And this is to win the first set, remember? Low right, just a little bit. 
Don't go anywhere near that six ball, Karen. Where are you going? Well, she really, like, of course, snooker background, she really punched the ball there a little bit, but she had to smooth stroke it to make sure it wouldn't go that far. And I mean, it's not impossible. It's not super tough, but it, she just makes stuff a lot more hard. And you see the sturdy self. bridge, very important. Any shot you're playing, you need a sturdy bridge. This is okay. But all the hard work is done here. I don't see Fevilova coming back to the table. Just, I mean, just in case it might happen, then it would be very unexpected because the balls are spread well and experience could play a big part here. Would have liked to be maybe just a tad straighter, but she's okay, isn't she? She can just hold this. Took her snooker chalk pocket off her pants just to make sure she didn't touch any balls. As you can see. Yeah. Loop. Famously, and I think it might have been in the Masters or something, where Max Lechner actually dropped his chalk and it rolled onto the table and hit a ball. Peg Lyon did it today. All, like He dropped his chalk and it went all over the table and just... just in between the balls and then hit him like wow <laughs> it was so so close <laughs> yeah like i said quite straightforward stuff here needs to get a small angle on the eight of course doesn't want to get straight but the odds of getting straight here are quite low She hit that thick, you know. Yeah, and I was always going to be <laughs> playing to get more well, of that reel. She, she knows she went a little bit wrong there. Yeah, she's still okay. If she plays this with top left, she can get off that long reel and be okay. Well, knowing her, she's stunning, of course, like all snooker players like to do. Maybe even drawing. Well, oh, yeah. doesn't want to be on the reel. Oh, this is bad news. I don't like it. Well, what she can do is just roll the cue ball through and leave herself a spot shot because look, that's more or less a spot shot or a shootout shot, shall we say, that we use. Yeah, I mean, it's either just roll it in or jack up and try to draw the cue ball back, but that's, she's rolling forward here. That's, that's crazy talk, Tim, for you. Thanks. Yeah. So, big shot here. This is to win set number one. Treat it like a shootout shot. She won on a shootout, I believe, in her last match. Here she goes. Karen Kaur to win the first set. She shoots. And she and scores. What a great shot that is. Wow. What an out. Yeah, to win the first set. That's such a huge, huge shot. Absolutely amazing. So let's talk predictions. Tim, who do you think we will be seeing in the men's final? And who will we be seeing in the women's final? Women first, of course. I do like Jasmine Ushan in the final. Possibly playing way. I think that's possible, right? In the draw. I think way it's way. possible, yeah. I think it's possible. And in the men's, Jason Shaw looked quite strong. And he might be up with Aloysius Yap. Yap, of course, defending champion from last year, so would be quite a feat if he can get it done. Yeah, well, after this rack, this upcoming rack, we're going to bring in Dean Rossler from the WPBA, the president, no less. I don't know whether I've got to salute or anything, but I, I might have to. <laughs> Special so, guest incoming. Yeah, after this rack, we'll get Dean in to tell us 
some more about the WPBA Tim and their view and their you know the view for the future so lost the cue ball a bit there but cue ball kissed in the four and somewhat has a shot on the one having the two in the left center pocket next to it so if she makes this then she could be en route yeah, I'd love to take this first rack wouldn't she keep control of the break Tim same thing like I said in the first set would be nice to get that first game on the board and get that rhythm going wow what a shot she's played there still left herself a little bit on the rail might have to jack up the cue ball to get nicely on the three which makes the shot a lot harder looking to see if she can stun past the six here and back up I wonder what Margaret's thinking I don't know whether she's feeling calm or can never tell with Margaret. Three seconds. Uh, just brushed the six, but she's come past it. Well, she's she's locked up the far. six as well. I think they play the bank here. What do you reckon? Yeah, I like to play the bank, especially because she can play a nice angle for the five in the corner and going to the short side for the six. I think she's playing safe, isn't she? Maybe get behind the five. Behind the seven, maybe even. Oh, yeah, behind the five. Oh, that's oh, no good. No, it's no good at all. She's left a shot at this. So, a chance. Okay, it's not a... A hang up but it's a chance the sort that you need to take if you're going to win tournaments like this Tim well she should definitely be pumped to get back to the table as Karen did have a good chance to win this game already and she's got dead straight with the cue ball close to the rail on this five and not sure how she's going to get on the six she might be able to cheat the pocket and go full forward topspin no, she's jacking up expect her to play safe So Karen going for the extension. Yeah, not really a successful safety. And that would be an understatement by Margaret. Definitely not what she was going for. And well, I'll tell you what, she might be 52 years old. I can't do that. I couldn't do that at 20. What a shot. And this is a little bit worrying, I think, for Margaret now, Tim, don't you? Yeah, she is not really showing up that strong she did start the first set like quite okay and then after Ken really took control and it doesn't really seem like Margaret has the well the power is maybe a strong word but doesn't really like force herself in back into this match yeah no, something you know I thought oh well it's you know they've been playing a lot of games today but so has Karen and Karen just finished a marathon match I think her match was three hours or something and she's come straight into this match so you know she's not had any time to recover at all really so I don't know sometimes you get it could it be well, one of those games one well, of those matches I mean you're just really getting gear I guess after playing three hours you're in that bunch I mean that's there's always two sides of the story or you're you ran out of fuel or you got lit. <laughs> That's how it goes. Oh, she's queuing so well now. Look she, at that for a draw shot. She's played a beauty on the seven as well, going in between the nine and the ten. And well. Just these two balls to take the lead again and set number two. 
She wants a place in the semi-final. That's what she wants. I think she wants a place in the final. Never mind the semi. And it goes in. Karen Kaur takes the first game in this second set. And yeah, I think it's time for Margaret to start worrying a little bit. Not too much because it could throw her off even more. But Karen looks in complete control here. Yeah, Alison Fisher lost the first set against Jasmine Ocean 4 2. She has taken the first rack, though, in the second set. Kelly Fisher took the first set 4-1. She's 1-0 up in the second as well. Amalia Matas lost the first set 4-2 to Wei Chi Jin. They're up to date. Jason Short went through earlier. Aloysius Yap also went through against John Mora. That's to the last eight. They're one round behind the guys. They resume tomorrow. And Karen core breaking here from the center. Needs a square hit. Okay, four oh. ball. Oh. Kicked into the top corner. Now then, oh, the two's gone in as well. So one to the three. It's looking pretty good here for Margaret to get back into this match. Square it up at one rack all. Right. Tyler Steyer was outside the arena at one stage. He's now moved into the arena. Yeah, left a nice angle on the three ball. Could choose to go two rails around the ten. Or if the table does grab enough, play with inside. I like to go two rails around it, go to the center of the table and continue that line. You can go all the way to the five if you want. She went that way, low right, heading towards the five, as you mentioned. That's okay. She's choice now. Can play it in the bottom corner, which I'm sure she will. Yeah. Too much traffic to send the cue ball careering around the table, especially during rush hour. Yeah, and if she can go forward here to the other long rail, she can also go forward again with the six going two rails towards the seven. That's a big shot because the position on the seven does really matter in this game. Okay, she's drawing to the other side. Nice angle. Two rails again, as you always say, coming towards the seven on that line. Oh, oh, don't overhit it. Oh. She's overhit this, you know. Don't land a on top of it. little love bump. And that's no good. She's in trouble. Expect her to bang the seven ball to the short rail. Get the cue ball to the other short rail. Hopefully, the ten in the between the two balls. Just like that. Would be really nice to get that ball in between. I think she did. It's a great shot there. Yeah. Can she kick behind it, though? It didn't look 
Makes it good to me. She certainly had a look at it. Well, she no. can. Oh. I think she can. She Kick really needs to this. crawl behind the seven, like really go in between that gap to have it stay. Just, Just oh, like that. Wow. What a great shot she's played there. Okay, there might be a one row kick on it, but I think she's got cover. I think, well, she's come straight with the jump stick, hasn't she? Margaret, she has. She's got the jump stick in her hand. She's going to go airborne with the air rush. Hopefully land it. There is absolutely Nicely no on the seven and hold for the eight no into the opposite room. corner. Well, nice hit. Oh, I said seven ball ending up. Yeah, it's going to be on yeah. for Karen Court. And this is one of your favourite shots coming up here. Run the cue ball around the angles. With some inside, which is left hand in this particular case. Well, I was thinking <laughs> for a change, maybe play low right. And leave a longer eight ball. She's trying to get close. Well, that's going to be close to the rail. But okay enough. Nice angle on the eight at least. So, you know, as long as you have the correct angle, it's not that bad to be on the rail. Like, you can survive. But now if you get the wrong angles too, it can be such a pain in the... Yeah. Neck. Neck, yeah. <laughs> Oh, beautifully no, can be, stroked in. Can be super tough to be on the rail, and yeah, Karen really took over control in this match. Yeah, Karen is, of course, Irish. Look at that. Well judged. It's going to be 2 0. Things looking good. For Karen Court. Yeah, put a great move on there. And we'll be back shortly. to the Kellogg Arena here in Battle Creek. Karen Court 2-0 up in this quarterfinal match of the women's Michigan Open. And I'm very, very proud to say I have sat next to me Dean Raisler, who is president of the WPBA. Hi, Dean. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, what about Karen Core here in her first uh, comeback play? It's like a flashback to 10 years ago. I mean, I'm sure, yeah, I must admit at this stage, I honestly haven't ever seen her play pool. I've seen her play a lot of snooker, of course, but never followed her pool career. Well, she was right up there at the top for a long time. Her versus Allison was like an automatic ESPN broadcast a lot of times. And frankly, I didn't know how well she'd play. She's been in three, won three shootouts already this weekend. So... It's like she's, you know, <laughs> hasn't lost much. And she took, I don't know if it was five, five years off. So, yeah. Was Look, it, why did she, was it because of some injury she had, I heard? Is that true? Or? It was, I think, uh, I think she was taking care of someone that was elderly and she got a nursing degree or a certificate. Oh, wow. And has done that. And uh, now she's able to come back and participate again. And when I heard that she wanted to come to this, I immediately reached out to her and we got it done. 
Well done. And we, what, just, we didn't have any spots left. It was just like in the nick of time, too, you know. I think you made the right decision, Dean. <laughs> Looking good. And you seem to be making a lot of others at the moment. As, oh, this is a great kick. That was okay. You might have heard the shot clock go off, but she did hit it before the time was up. For those of you just joining us, we are on a 30-second shot clock. You can take one extension each per rack, as we see the replay of that beautiful two-rail kick there. Dean? So the, the WPBA this year uh, partnered with Predator on four different tournaments to increase our schedule to 10 stops. And from what I've seen uh, of the production and the and everything with, with Karim and his crew, every tournament is getting better and better. Things are, you know, improving and, you know, we're getting things worked out, at, you know, on both ends. And uh, next year we've gotten, uh, you know, we're planning on signing a new deal again and uh, four more stops. Uh, so future looks bright. I mean, pool is hot right now, and if everybody gets together and, and works hard, I think we're hopefully get some more sponsorship, more money yet, even that's, you know, today we got some, better money but you know we all, we all could do with a little bit more we, we all could but i think uh could you include the commentators in that no i mean i haven't <laughs> seen any budget for commentators so <laughs> the 20 bucks you're getting a day is sufficient i'm sure 20 i was told it was 10 i'm well, very happy i doubled it <laughs> <laughs> you can come back again tomorrow if you want and double it again <laughs> right back to the series just for a moment there was a game of pool going on i forgot and a little safety battle going on yeah, so tell us more about the stops then. Okay, well, to finish our year uh, for WPBA and Predator, we have uh, next month, uh, October, I believe it's 19th to the 23rd, we're doing the Helena, uh, Helena Thornfield Memorial Tournament down in uh, Bristol, Tennessee. It's called the Sledgehammer Open at Janet Atwell's Pool Room. And then, of course, we have what everybody, the hot ticket, the Puerto Rico Predator, Predator Pro Billiard Series down there. Everybody's wanting to go to Puerto Rico, of course, you know take a vacation and play pool and I'll be there too I'm I'm happy to be able to attend <laughs> and uh, our last uh, stop of the year in December is my tournament in Wisconsin uh, the Dr. Pool Classic uh, and that's uh, December 7th to 11th so I'm by this time a lot of these girls have shown interest in coming up there it's gonna it's a pretty good uh, deal you know we're getting new faces some uh, foreign players I think there's 15 countries represented in this event and uh, I think there's more more out there and the talent level is going to rise and it's going to be tough to play in a WPBA tournament. And something else that we've seen coming up, especially from the States, well, from Europe as well, are the youngsters, the juniors, you know, and we've seen young Savannah Easton here from the States, of course. You've got Sophia Maas, you've got Kennedy Mayman, yeah. who was in Austria. There really is some great talent coming through, isn't there? And uh, uh, definitely needed and definitely hoping that they continue on, get better and better. Uh, more young girls see this and decide to take up pool. I've just got to stop you. I think she's going to play the 10 combo here and yep. play safe behind the five in case she misses it. I think that's the plan. She missed it, but she had, like you said, play safe. Two-way shot. Yep. Nice, smart shot. Played it very well, didn't she? Yeah, sorry. Continue. Well, anyway, uh, you know, it's the young players is the future, obviously. If we don't have anybody replacing the veteran players were going nowhere and it was a it was a scare for about 10 15 years there there's nobody coming through in my business too we're having the same people come to all the tournaments and there's very few there's another one i see sitting up in the stands next to janet haley marion is another uh young player and uh you know the more opportunities we can give them expanding our fields uh, Krim and i talked about you know atlantic city that's going to come up first of the year in january um Having some juniors there to use some more spots, we're going to go to a 96 field because uh, Atlantic wow. City is pretty accessible, you know. And there's going to be it's only women's only event along with. And where is that taking place? That's Do you at, know yet? Uh, I think it's uh, Harris. Oh, maybe, Harris, yep. In okay. Atlantic City, uh, the actual dates are. Uh, I forgot the exact dates in January, but you can you'll be able to find it, of course, by that time. Mm -hmm. In no time, and that's all will be announced. And then Vegas is in February, and the WPBA has got a lot of repeat. Uh, here comes a. An easy, hopefully, one uh, ten combo. Here. Second attempt at one as well, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Two times the charm. Well, three in nothing. It goes three zero, yeah. and Karen Core all of a sudden is on the hill. Wow! So Just like that. 
is there any other message you want to get across to us? I mean, this could be over in Iraq. And well, yeah, I mean, it's to... Can you talk quickly? <laughs> sure. Uh, well, I'm not a car salesman. Talk. We can talk about her drinking a Diet Pepsi if Pepsi throws in 50 grand. But no. <laughs> Anyhow, no, it's just to all the fans at WPBA.com out there for all the stuff in our rankings list, and that keeps changing after each event. And, you know, we're just looking forward to a, even a better year uh, next year than we're having this year. And... Hopefully things continue and pool continues on a hot streak because, you know, with the pandemic for two years, a lot of people bought home tables. More and people are getting it. More people will be watching pool because they're not starting to play pool. The whole thing can snowball. Yeah, I was just going to say the pandemic, of course, ruined a lot of things, but it also brought a lot of things to life as well. Yeah. Plus, now, how good is it to see the Taiwanese coming over? You know, the Chinese Taipei, the Singaporeans. We've got two, three Singaporeans yeah. in this. So how important is it to get them back into the sport as well I, I think, traveling i think i think it's important because you're opening other eyes to a lot more uh, audience following their own players you know so you're expanding your your uh, broadcast network and along with that again the sponsorship may be coming from foreign places to keep things rolling you know and we're just you know wpba is in a is in a sponsorship drive to start out now with the the players are helping and we're going to go to corporate level and we're just going to get back to raising some money to build up our events and who knows what the future will bring and another point i must bring up with you while i've got you here i don't really turn it into an interview of course but how important would it be to get paul recognized as an olympic sport and oh. finally get this sport you know when you've got things like break dancing going into it and paul doesn't how what you know what What's your strategy to get this game up where it belongs? I think basically uh, from the WPBA side to get us back on some kind of television. You know, the streaming the streaming is good, but if we can do the streaming and plus get some little TV in there and, and raise it. And, uh, you know, the, the vision is to, to get us to Olympics. I mean, it's been talked about for, what, 10, 15 years now, right? Nobody, and, and then I see on ESPN, I see axe throwing and, and cornhole. So it's like, really? Uh, but Yeah, we've got six holes. Yeah, they only got one to throw at. And <laughs> but, you know, it's all. They got Johnsonville to sponsor them, you know. There's that company out there. Just got to find it, you know, to start it. Once you get one, more will follow. I got some plans, but I just, I'm not going to talk about, you know, free things that haven't happened. But No, of course not. But the, the point is that steps are being taken and... The, the sport is in probably the best place it's been in for a good few years now and of course it's bringing players back out yep. and thinking hey hang on a minute there's money in this to be won and everybody's opening their eyes like okay this is worth doing again you know yeah so let's have a little look around the table and see what's going on Margaret on a, a run out here on the five ball this is the big shot you'd think yeah, here gotta get way back down for the six and not hitting any traffic on the way That's well, pretty she good. Is it? She made it. She's behind oh, the seven. She's man. gone behind the seven, look, and ball. that's the second time she's played you a see shot the little, like that. You see the little smile there. She, you know, is just like, really? I have to have a kick at it. She hit it good, but just not quite enough. Yeah, I'm just looking at the, you know, the remaining players in this tournament. It is the usual suspects, really, isn't it? And, you know, the old school coming back in. You've got Jasmine, Allison, yep. Kelly. Yep. Wei Wei. Wei Wei. Do you know how to say her name? It's Wei Su Chen, but I call her Wei Wei. I'm the yeah, one that actually gave her that her name. Wei Wei. Oh, yeah. are you? Yeah, yeah. So, but, yeah, it's good to see her. I haven't seen her for, like, three years. And I can't let you go without telling me the story about Karen Kaur. I hear you've got a great Karen Kaur story. I do? Did somebody tell you that? Yeah, Jerry Stuckart told me. He lied. Did he? Yeah. It involves a number. Oh, my goodness. You got me. You got me stumped. I thought you... He said, just mention that and he'll know it. Unless he's the one that's going crazy. No, that's a Jerry Eng story. Jerry ah. Eng. That's why you got me. Jerry Eng. I'm sorry. Our eldest member. And I hope she doesn't kill me for saying she's 85 years old now. Well, I've heard 82, 84. Now you've just given her another year. What, what? How old is she? She's eight, she was 84 and just had a birthday to go to 85. 
and she played Savannah when she was 84, and Savannah was 12, and we, you know, taped it and everything up in Minnesota. But the thing is, if she turns 86, we're going to have to 86 her, kick her out of, kick her out of the tour. <laughs> now, I've got one more question for you, because being a Brit, the first time I heard that 86 was Gordon Ramsay on his cooking program saying 86 the steak or whatever. Yeah, yeah. What does, why is it 86? Mm. I don't get it. Do you know? No, I don't know either. It's just a, a number that means something, you know? Okay. As far as I know, there might be something way behind it, but I never took time to figure it out. Just so you know, we've done a lovely little thing. We caught Jerry in the audience earlier on, and we got the camera to, to go onto her face and we told a lovely little story about the Savannah 12 and, oh, yeah, yeah. and 84 yeah. and she actually interviewed her yesterday didn't she I think so yeah yeah she did it's on the Predator website if you want to go and see that as we see Margaret well is she going to get no oh, open left it open chance for Karen Core then to wrap this match up and take it two sets to zero just having a look around oh Jasmine Ocean Won the first set 4-2. She's now 2-1 down in the second. Okay. So we could be heading to a shootout there. And way, way won the, scroll back up there, way, way won the first set 4-2. Uh, These are against uh, Amalia. And now they're 1-1 in the second set. Yeah. Great Spaniard, of course. Lots of talent coming out of Spain. And look at this. Yeah. She's overhit this by a long way. Yeah. She's overhit that by about four feet. Wow, she's pointing... <laughs> I don't know whether she got a strange bounce. Have a look at this again, Dean. What? Just kept her going, huh? I just think she misjudged it. Yeah. She'll call the side just in case, but she'd love to get that cue ball behind the 10 and send the 7 up. Something she's, like that. She's look, gonna, at this. look at this. She's going to get a... Ooh, oh, when you luck's in, the, your luck's in. Yeah, she's going to get a hit, but she can't make it, I don't believe. The air rush will come out, not for the first time tonight. Calls the seven in the corner. It doesn't hurt to be playing good and still get a roll here and there. Yeah, that's when it normally happens, doesn't it? And how's the tournament so far been for you in your eyes as a WPBA president? You've been here, you've been you've been here since the meeting. I remember seeing you at the players' meeting. Yeah. Apart from not being able to get in your hotel first night. <laughs> it was, well, we did get in eventually, but I guess you got my room, so. I did, yeah, it's lovely. About, oh, it's isn't penthouse. It? It's, the it's only it's trouble is you have to go all the way up to the roof and the pool's a little bit cold at the moment, I must admit. Yeah, but they, they got it straightened out. <laughs> yeah, so how's it been? How's the tournament going for you? It's been good, it's been good. You? Uh, you know, it's, I, I hadn't met some of the players because I couldn't get to Canada. I had an event and I think both of the first two previous tournaments I had something going on, but uh, getting over here from Wisconsin wasn't too bad. And oh, she's oh, played a, a beautiful shot. bank shot there. Yeah, round of applause there. Now, I think this eight does pass the 10. Yeah. Great it's, it's one pocket shot that. Bet. It's tight, but it can go past. This, this is how I remember Karen with the focus. I always had that focused look. This is a tough shot, isn't it? Oh, yep, you had it called. Uh, now, now here easy. you go again. Like I say, you're playing good, but you're still going to get the rolls. Yeah, and look, it's, got, well, it's not quite tight. So Margaret needs to figure out a good safety. Here we got Jerry over here taking pictures. Unbelievable. The guys everywhere. Yeah, Jerry Stuckart, we're talking about, of course, he's tournament director. I've known Jerry for a, a long, long time. He originated in Wisconsin. He's out in Phoenix area now, and he's helped me in Vegas. He's helped me on some other tournaments. And uh, so I know his capabilities. I know that he has a passion for pool, and that's why I said I think I got something that you can probably like with this Predator. So I put him on all the Predator tournaments because I think it's important to have the same person that can grow with what we're doing and know. And yeah, he's, and my, he's, a, he's, a, he's my right hand as far as that goes, so he's communicating with me all the time even if I can't be there. Yeah, and that, that speaks volumes about Predator as well because they try to keep the same team all the time themselves. We all know what we're doing. It runs like a well-oiled machine. I wanted to ask you one more question 
how do you feel about I mean personally I think it's a genius idea of running these tournaments alongside the state championships you know we've got 750 league players there so we've got a ready-made audience which can showcase the ladies game as well of course as well as the men's but get the fans up close and personal and get to know the characters the people behind the queue yeah i think uh it, in my events i always like to uh when we run the wpb events have a side-by-side -side tournament and uh, while we're talking there's some extra innings going on here. But and look, I can't at look at this. Like Once three, again. Three in a row. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, well, she's you kicking at this you one, you Ralph. Sorry. You have Jerry. to have the fans. Jerry, I'll call you yeah. Jerry. Don't ever do that again. Sorry, please. sorry, Jay. So. <laughs> Dean. <laughs> so, this particular Michigan State tournament has been going on for quite some years. I mean, I ran it for quite a while there. Um, uh, early on when they, they didn't even have a, the people that were running the BCA a tournament at the time actually didn't want to do it anymore and I picked it up within three weeks and got a location and got the tables otherwise it would have been dead so um, it's been picked up now since then because I'm you know obviously can't do everything anymore but um, it is very important it's vital otherwise we wouldn't have hardly anybody in the stands and, and the, the players want to play in front of people I mean it's like any sport you know just makes such a yeah. difference doesn't it and, and following on from that point of course all these predator events the predator csi pro billiard series events are totally free oh look she's gone for the caram in uh, the oh combo in the side she's made it it's over and she will go through to tomorrow's semi-final thank you so much for watching we've got so much to bring you tomorrow we've got semi-finals we've got finals thank you so much to uh, Dean Raisler, I got it right. You at did last get it right, Burke. For coming in, pleasure. Hopefully, we'll do this again one day. Tyler, congratulating Karen Core. That's lovely to see. We'll be back tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Thanks ever so much for watching. I've been Mark White with Tim Deroyter and, of course, Dean Raisler. Thanks so much, guys. See you tomorrow.